This video is going to walk you through solving the Alex problem, solving a basic calorimetry problem. In this problem, we have a coffee cup calorimeter. There is an object that has been dropped into the water in the calorimeter. The water and the object are at two different temperatures. Heat is going to be transferred either from the object to the water or from the water to the object. And we're being asked to calculate some piece of information about this particular system. In this problem, um, I am being given a sample of glass that has been dropped into the calorimeter, and I'm being asked to calculate the specific heat capacity of the glass. The very first thing that we should do with this problem is just kind of dissect all the information that has been given to us. I'm gonna make a list of all of the information that we have for the glass in this problem, and then also all of the information that we have for the water in this problem. When you're solving this problem on your own, it may not always be glass, the object may not always be glass, but you will always have water inside the calorimeter. So over here, this could be for whatever is being dropped into the calorimeter. So this problem is telling me that my mass of my sample of glass is 54.7 grams. I'm gonna make a note of that. And the says that it's put into a calorimeter that has 100 grams of water. So that's my mass of water. 100 grams and it tells me that the glass sample starts at a temperature t initial of 89.4 degrees c so that's my t initial the water starts at 23 so t initial for the water is 23. When the temperature of the water stops changing, it is 28.3. So that's the final temperature of the water, 28.3. Now it doesn't tell us this specifically, but the final temperature of the glass is gonna be exactly the same as the final temperature of the water. For whatever object you have um, in the water, the final temperature of these two objects is always going to be exactly the same. Heat is gonna to continue to transfer from the hot object to the cold object until both of them have the exact same final temperature. So no matter what your problem is, final temperature is gonna be the same for both objects. The pressure remains constant at one atmosphere. That's information that we really don't need to think about. It's just telling us that just to verify that this is a constant pressure calorimeter or a, a coffee cup calorimeter. We're not gonna actually do anything with this one atmosphere number. It's asking us to calculate the specific heat of the glass. So that's the number that we don't know. It's not giving us the specific heat of water, but the specific heat of water is uh, 4.184 joules per gram degrees C. And that's the number that you should be familiar with. So how are we gonna go about calculating the specific heat of the glass? Well, if we look at all the variables that we have here, first of all, the first thing that I notice is that for both of these, we have enough information to calculate delta T. So let's just go ahead and calculate delta T. You've done enough calorimetry problems in your life that you know that you really need the delta T. You don't really need the initial or the final, you need to know the change. For the glass, um, for, first of all, delta T is final minus initial. So for the glass, it's gonna be 23.8 minus 89.4. The delta T there is 61.1 degrees C. And for the water, final 28.3 minus 23. The delta T there is a positive 5.3. The signs are gonna be really important here, so make sure that you're paying attention to the signs. So looking at the variables that have been given to us, um, we have the variables for both of these problems to use the QSMAT equation. And so that means that's the equation that we are going to use. For water, we have S, we have M, and we have delta T, so we have enough information to calculate Q. For the glass, we have M and delta T. Obviously, we don't have S, which means we can't directly calculate Q. But we do know that all of the heat that is lost by the glass is absorbed by the water. So whatever the value of, delta, of Q is for the glass, it is equal to the value of Q for water. They're different only in terms of their sign. This is because all of the heat that is lost by the glass is absorbed by the water, all of it. So what we can do is use all of this information over here for water to calculate Q. Again, because we have S and M and delta T. If we know Q for the water, we can easily figure out Q for the glass, and then we'll know Q and M and delta T for the glass, and we'll be able to figure out S. So let's go over here again, um, working with the water. 
And let's go ahead and calculate the value of Q for the water. SM delta T for the water, S is 4.184 joules per gram degrees C. The mass is 100 and the delta T is a positive 5.3. And I'm gonna use my calculator really quick to figure out what this is. 4.184 times 100 times 5.3 is 2217.52 joules, and I'm just gonna leave all those sig figs on there for now. So this is the value of Q for the water. So that means we are now ready to calculate for the glass. For the glass, we're going to use QSM delta T again. For the glass, we know that the value of Q is equal to the value of water, but just with a negative sign. So Q is negative 2217, 52 joules. And again, that's because all of the heat that was absorbed by the water came from the glass. We don't know the value of S for the glass, we know the mass is 54.7 grams, 54.7 grams, and we know that the delta T for the glass is negative 61.1 degrees Celsius. Again, we've got to be really careful with the negative signs. So now we can calculate the S. 22 point, negative 22.1752 divided by 54.7 and divided by negative 61.1. This gives us a value of S of 0.6635. The units are joules per gram degrees C. Alex wants this um, to two significant figures, so that's going to be 0.66.